Hey guys, Joe here again uh, for a second show. Have you ever, has anyone ever fished with one of these, the Automatic Fishermen? They are a blast to fish with. Um, they are a little bit pricey, they're about 40 bucks a piece, <clears throat> and I love them, they are absolutely great. And for those of you that don't know what they are, this is just a weight so you have slack in the line, and the fish will, I'm just going to wrap this around my finger, fish pulls on it, bobber comes up, boom, sets the hook, and you fight the fish right there, pick up the rod and fight them. Now, this week's video, what I'm going to show you, is you can make these at home for a fraction of the cost. And this is what mine look like, that I'm going to teach you how to make. It's made out of a uh, 22 inch board, a uh, piece of uh, one by one and a half inch board, either a piece of conduit, PVC pipe, uh, you can either use a coat hanger, um, an eye hook, a key ring, and a couple uh, screws, and you're good to go. And this does the same thing. Pulls down, bobber comes up, sets the hook, fish is on, you pick them up and fight them with the rod. It's a blast. It's a great way to put your skills to work at home and do some of your own building and have fun on the ice. Um, so... Looking forward to this video, and uh, first I'm going to go over a few things you're going to need, and check them out. Alright, now that you cut your boards to 22 inches and 5.5 and inches, I am using this side of the board down here as my back. You want to find the center of it and make a mark at 1.5 inches and 4 inches. This is going to be your different holes to where you can move around your piece of conduit or PVC pipe for a longer or shorter rod. Then at the front of the board, you want to find the center and make a mark at 1.5 inches. Then with the one by one and a half, if I'm using this as the bottom, you find the center of it and make a mark at two and a half inches and four and a quarter inches right there. These marks are going to be the holes that you're going to drill out with the 3 16 drill bit. All right, now you're going to take your quarter inch drill bit and drill your two holes, the one and a half and four inch, completely through the board. like so. Then after you drill these two holes out, you're going to flip your board over to the back side. And I am using a half inch 90 degree countersink. And you countersink both those holes down about five eighths of an inch. So when you end up, you can see that they're countersinked about five eighths of an inch deep. It's just an estimate, it doesn't have to be perfect. This just gives the uh, nut room so that the nut sits flusher to the board and holds tighter. Next, you take your one by one and a half and you drill through your two marks with the 3 16 drill bit. Drill all the way through. And these marks are for where you take your eye bolt with your key ring on it. And this is for if you want the rod to set harder, you put it on the bottom one. Not as hard, you put it on the top of the one. So I'm going to set it at the bottom. And you want it to look like that. Alright, then you take to the front of the board and you take your one and a half inch hinge. Once you center the hinge, I just eyeball it like this. 
I'll make a mark and you screw the front two holes of the hinge down. I'll just mark it like that so I know where it's at. And then this is what you're left with. I got the front two holes centered as best that I can right there so that the bottom side of the hinge can flip up like that. Now that you got it screwed down, you take the you take it back out. Now you got your holes where the hinge is going to go. Now you're going to take your hinge off and your holes are marked. Like so. Then you're going to take your hinge and you're one by one and a half and this is lines up perfectly. So just leaving your hinge resting on the board, you're going to want to close the hinge and then take your one by one and a half, since this is the front of the one by one and a half I'm using, you want that facing forward. You're going to set that on the hinge, you're going to open it up and you're going to screw it right to the bottom of the one the one by one and a half and it should line up just pretty evenly so this is what you got now your one by one and a half the hinge screwed on the bottom closes and opens and then you take that and you screw it down to the board now with the two remaining screws and it's simple now because you got it lined up so this is what it looks like now that it's screwed on there and you can see this stands up and falls over here's a different angle so you can see how it's screwed on there falls up alright now that you got the hinge back on the board and attached to the one by one you're going to want to take your three inch mending plate um, it doesn't have to be a mending plate it can be any type of metal with uh, just two pieces something that the hinge cannot close all the way and it creates back pressure and has the hinge fall so what I do is I just lay I'll lay that right on top of the hinge and I will center it as best I can and again it doesn't have to be perfect and then I'll take my sharpie and you want to mark just the outside holes so that you know where to drill your pilot holes at so you take the mending plate off and you use your 5 30 seconds drill bit to drill the pilot holes for the number 12 screws. And I drill down about a half an inch with that drill bit and that's just a good start for these three quarter inch number 12 Phillips screws. You set your mending plate back over the top once you drilled the holes and now your three quarter inch number 12 screws fit right in there and it'll screw down nicely so what this mending plate does it keeps back pressure on the hinge because you want that to fall over I'm gonna screw these down real quick so then this is what you're left with once you got the mending plate screwed down it puts back pressure on the hinge and it falls over. I recommend using stainless steel hardware due, due to that you are going to be fishing with the stuff. It is going to get wet and there's less corrosion on it. You don't have to. Um, you can save money by just using stuff you have around the house. But I went out and bought all stainless steel mending plates, screws. Everything on here is going to be stainless steel except my 7 inch piece of conduit that I'm going to attach to the board back here so that I can put my rod in. Alright, now for attaching your piece of PVC pipe 
or a conduit. I am using a piece of conduit that I made into a fishing rod holder for an ice shanty. Um, it's one and a quarter inch inside diameter and it's just I flattened one end of it and drilled a hole through it like that. Um, you, otherwise you use a piece of PVC pipe and if you use PVC pipe the length of your bolt may vary and where to put it. Also keep in mind what I am showing you how to set this up, I am using a 30 inch medium rod for this. So I know we're in that last position when I go to set this, it's set up for this 30 inch rod. Now if you're using a shorter rod, you want to set it up in the other bolt position where it gives more room or less room to allow for shorter rods. Now what I do is I will take my quarter 20 bolt and half or one and a half inch stainless steel washer. This is by far the best what I found using this conduit to do this. It is you put your bolt on there and on the back side it's going to look like that where the bolt just is flush with the board. That's where the counter sinking and you take and once you get the nut started in there, it's game on from there. Because once it's started, you screw it down as best you can. And then you center this. And you take your 7 16 wrench and you tighten, you tighten up the bolt. So now that's snug. And it'll, it'll be able to move a little bit. You can put a drop of Loctite in the threads on the bottom side and the nut just goes right into the countersink there and that's, that's flush. So now that you got this set up we need to learn how, I'm going to teach you how to make the trigger. This is the most difficult part of this build is making a trigger. Um, I use stainless steel 1 16th rod for this because I converted everything over to stainless steel after using these for a while we can also make them out of coat hangers. I know it's kind of hard to see and I'll do some close-ups of them. And you got to play around with this and how I'm going to show you how to do this is, I mean they're almost identical. Some are shorter, the stainless steel one is longer and they do the same thing. Um, and this will be attached to the key ring. So you got this right here. I'll do some close-ups. Once you got the PVC on, you can put your rod in. This will sit up and your rod will bend down and attach in to these triggers. And you, you can put them next to each other and this is where you have to adjust it to how you want it, whether you want it lighter, if you want a lighter trigger you have to bend this piece down or that piece more straight and it, you can set the sensitivity on it um, and I'll show you how to do that once we move to the basement because you're going to need a vise and a drill bit and a couple pairs of pliers to do this and here's the close ups of the conduit it's screwed in right there and the back side, you can see the nut is and bolt are down inside the board flush. That's what the countersink is for. And we'll move to the basement to show you how to build your trigger. All right, guys, this is what I'm doing. I recommend if you haven't done this before or bent around any type of metal, um, I'd get a couple extra pieces to use. This is 1 16th inch stainless rod in one foot sections. Um, I'm using a 7 30 seconds drill bit that I'm just going to put in this vise with the bit side down. And this is what we, this is the finished product, but this is what we're going to do first is we're going to make these two loops in it like so with about, leave an extra, I don't know, I'd say extra four inches hanging out so there's two ways you can do this you can go like this so that if this is your four inches right here that you're gonna leave out 
what I do is then I'll take it and bend it and this is difficult it's gonna to want to spring back and spring all over on you and you want to try to get the wrap as tight as possible you're gonna to have to over bend it so that you're left with a piece like that and now you can bend the rest and you're gonna to have to find on your rod and reel on uh, how to bend it and which way works the best I found once that you got these two coils in it I'll take a pliers and I'll squeeze them together you can also heat them up with a torch and then squeeze them together it's similar to vaping or making vaping coils but then I will take it and about an inch up I'll put a little bend going downward in it I don't know, so I don't know if you can see it that well but right here is the coil and then I bend it downward just a little bit and then once you get go up about another half inch and this is where you're going to want to make it a real real steep bend I'm going to bend it about 45 degree angle like so and then you can take this and it takes a little practice bending all this stuff up but this is what I found that works the best and then this piece right here will be cut off and don't worry if it's not straight right away you can straighten it out and and bend it around it does it is pliable so now that you got this I have to get my other pliers for this and then alright I got a needle nose pliers now now then you wanna take the piece that you're gonna be sticking in your eyelet you wanna leave about three eighths inches sticking up maybe a mo little bit more I mean it's all rough estimate and you wanna clip that off so then this is what I'm left with right here is something looking like that and then I'll take a file and file down the sharp edges from clipping it off and then I found that with your remaining piece you're gonna to wanna to make kind of a goofy U so you take the needle nose pliers right at the tip and you got about an inch sticking out you want to bend that over all the way over so it looks like this and then once it's bent over you want to take it and bend it back out you want to make kind of almost a W looking shape is that and now you just want to squeeze it all together as best you can and I'm just doing it with the pliers again you want to pinch the one all the way back to the main shaft right here and then you take your pliers and you just bend it until you get it to where your line will just sit in there and then you can put it in the vise and get, you want to get it as straight as possible then lined up with the trigger so then you can twist it and just so you get it to where it sits you can take it and bend it over a little bit and then I'll take this and I will clip off the end and there's your trigger alright with the trigger we just made you take the trigger and you put it on the key ring so this is what we got so when a fish pulls down it's gonna pull that out of your eyelet and that's gonna fall down fall out of the way and you can pick up the rod and, and fight the fish so now that we got this done I'm going to show you how I set up my rod again this is a 30 inch medium and 
It's a Dave Jens split handle, hybrid composite. Um, I use braid because I'm normally fishing walleyes, northerns, and if I'm fishing walleyes, I will take uh, a monofilament leader and put it on northerns. I'll use steel leaders. And I take a slip bobber and I cut the ends off, just like so. And you put the line through the first eyelet of your pole, and then you thread your line through the slip bobber that you cut apart. You let that go on. So you got the slip bobber on. Now you go through the rest of your eyelets on your pole. So once you're done, you got a bobber that only sits in the first two eyelets of your rod. And then now is it now comes the fun part of adjusting how you want this to fire and when and how you want everything to work stuff around here. This is all going to be, it's all, you're going to have to do it and figure out how you want this setup to work for you. Now what I do is I'll make sure when I'm messing around with this, I'll pull out a bunch of lines so that it doesn't pull back through. You want to take this and you want to stand this up. You want to bend the rod down and attach it. And it may not hold right away, so you got to be careful. So right there, it, it doesn't want to hold. It wants to fire right away. So then you take a pliers, and you it, it takes some time to get this right. And you just want to start bending this up again so that you can set your rod in there and it doesn't fire. So you can try a little bit steeper of an angle right away. See right there, it's holding in there. I'll get the camera. So this is what it's gonna look like. And then your line's gonna go through, and I'll wrap the line around, and then you gotta bend this part up so it sits straight. So what happens is the fish will pull, pull the line, the bobber gives him room to run. And when he pulls down on this, and that's where it's bent too tight. See it won't fire right there? So then you gotta go back and rebend it. So I just went through again and I bent it all back and see how I think would work better. And you hook it on there. And you want your line to go through. You want the, remember this is gonna be your ice fishing hole right here. So then I'll wrap this around my finger. And this just gives the fish room to run with the bait so they don't feel tension right away. Once they get the right here, they've already had a good amount of time to take that bait. When they pull down on it, that's going to fire, and you got the fish right there. And you pick them up and fight it. All right, here's the close-ups of it right here. Again, this is how the trigger is going to look. The line I'm going to set right on the one side of the U. Let me wrap this around my finger. Fish is going to pull. It's giving them time to take it and then once they get to the end here, and you can adjust this to where it's a hair trigger or where they have to pull on it a little bit more. If you're using this for northerns, I suggest using a tighter tighter trigger. And uh, walleyes, I would have it set at a little bit lighter tension for it to go off. and. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it was great fun doing this and teaching you guys how to do this. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know.